Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking this video out. I hope that you guys can get some better understanding of some of the basics of um, carpet cleaning with the Eco and the VLM technique that everybody's kind of raging about. It's a modified bonnet cleaning technique and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get on in the video. But you know, I've noticed something when I go through my analytics, over 70% of you guys haven't subscribed yet. So go ahead and click and subscribe right now. There's going to be all sorts of benefits. Also join our Facebook group. It's super helpful. There's lots of great information for those of you that are wanting to learn more. And for those of you that just want to join in as part of the conversation, you know, we can do that. So enjoy the rest of this video. Super appreciate all of you. Remember to subscribe. It really helps us out. Have a great one. Enjoy the video. Okay guys, we're doing our pre-inspection. First thing you'll notice is some color loss. Super common to have color loss on a job um, due to owners of the home trying to clean out spots and that in this case there's a home health aide that comes in and helps her out and she's tried to take some things out. Good old over-the-counter products doing rubbish results once again. Now if you look there, that's where she said her dog had um, upchucked we're gonna take care of that for her, no problem. They did attempt to clean it up, but there's a little bit of the dye from the um, dog food, which is pretty common with dog food. Some traffic patterns, but just a basic clean on this one. But first, no matter what you do, you have to set up for the job and do a pre-inspection. vacuuming now this is where in our industry it gets a little cloudy there's guys that don't want to pre vacuum well with BLM it's a thousand percent necessary with hot water extraction it's also a thousand percent necessary if you don't want to make mud in the carpet you got to do the dry soil removal I can't stress it enough dry soil will bond to the sides of the carpet and inside the carpet it may appear to be gone but it's not I'm sorry, once you get something wet, it wants to stay in there. You just make mud, you just spread it around. So be a professional and pre vacuum for those of you guys that are learning from my videos. For those of you that are just enjoying watching the process of carpet cleaning, the reason you pre vacuum is to get rid of all that dry soil. It's called insoluble soil. It means it can't be dissolved. So if you can't dissolve it, you have to suck it out. The only way you can suck it out is through pre-vacuum. You know, you can also use a CRV, which is a mechanical means that doesn't use um, vacuum, doesn't use suction to take it out. But I like to use my good old Kirby. The reason I like my Kirby is it has an exceptionally high level of CFMs, and it really does a terrific job. An aggressive feeder bar, really well designed, you know, classic, works terrific. Um, that does not mean there's not other great vacuums. The workhorse is terrific, awesome machine. I definitely say that there's people that love them. If you're a homeowner considering getting a vacuum, that's a terrific vacuum. You don't have to go and spend though $2,000 on a Kirby. There is used ones all over Facebook Market and Craigslist. Also yard sales. People spend $1,900 on these things. It's a little silly. You can get them for on the cheap, 
rebuild them, fix them up, take them to the back of the dinner shop, they'll last you 20 years. If you're worried about the weight, well, they're self-propelled and you don't have to worry about the weight. I worry about the weight because I have to carry them in and out. Another great alternative, though, is the Royal. The Royal Vacuum is an incredible vacuum cleaner. Highly recommend it. They're available all over the place. Another great vacuum is the good old classic Sanitaires. Can't go wrong with those. Um, with the Vibagrim brush, do a terrific job. So there's some great options. Um, myself, I like bags because I like to be able to throw out the dirt and I like to be able to wash the bag in the washing machine. I think that it does a really good job. But now we're going to get back to where you can enjoy watching the rest of this vacuuming and I'll be chiming in a little bit later. Now we're going to go through and pre-inspect and pre-spot. Now this pre-spotter that we're using is pretty unique. It's something that we're testing and trying out. It's designed to have a high level of oxygen. It's an oxygenating product. It removes most spots and spills. We're also going through with the black light check because she does have a little dog. We already did that in our pre-inspection before we started filming. But we're making sure that there's no nothing that we missed. It is a real little dog though. And we're pre-treating that area because it needs a little bit of added oxygen. And that's what this product is. It Once again, it's gonna be going under our own label with something we're working really hard on. Um, it does a terrific job, by the way. It also has a deodorization factor, but it doesn't add an odor in its presence. So we're going through and we're pre-heating the, hitting these spots. You can do the same. I highly recommend with any process that you check out the spots and the spills and the areas that are going to be problematic, especially when you're doing a light cleaning like what we're doing today or a touch-up cleaning like we're doing today and hit those areas. You know, it we don't really see a lot, but we're just going through and we're seeing what we can do. Once again, there's some color loss. Make notes when you're doing this stuff and make sure that you put it on your invoice. It'll protect you from any future issues. I actually do like filming on a lot of my jobs even though I don't always publish because I don't have permission. In this case I do have permission. Now if you notice that, that spot that I'm working on right now is fluorescing but it doesn't really show up all that great. It is fluorescing on camera so we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of added oxygen down. In this case um, I do believe it may be where her dog may have tinkled. Once again this is a touch up process. Um, we're not doing a super deep cleaning. They're not wanting that. You gotta do what your customers want or you'll never, you, you can do what you want all you want, but you'll never hit all the niches in the market. You'll always be missing out on some of your customers. This black light is a terrific one. It's made by Anchor. I'm gonna put a link in the description. If you want one, please buy one from Amazon using the link. It'll help out the channel a little bit. So we've done our pre-black um, light inspection with our pet spotter and all around general spotter. We're now gonna go through with our encapsulation product. Now in this case, it's one that we're working on. It's an all around encapsulation product and general purpose cleaning agent. It's not just used for carpet cleaning. It can be used for a variety of types of cleaning. It's just terrific cleaner. The way it works is it breaks down the surface tension between whatever you're trying to clean and the soil. So it's a soil release agent that is second to none. A little bit of scrubbing and it just goes away. I'm just super excited. I hope in the spring of 2021 we'll be able to release this product. Um, but we're taking our time. We're really testing it very thoroughly first. You'll notice it gives some dramatic results. It's also pH neutral, which I think is super important. You don't want to be adding stuff to the carpet that doesn't help the carpet. In this case, it helps the carpet. Now the pads that we're using is just a traditional thin um, bonnet. Nothing special about it. 
they're they're oftentimes all over the place nothing super special and we're going to use our echo and i'm going to let you guys just enjoy watching the scrubbing with the eco and um go from there
Whenever you're cleaning carpet, it's important to remember that you may have to retouch an area. You cannot be a one-hit wonder in this job. You've got to be willing to see an issue and then re-clean it or go back over it a second time. It's just the way it is. You know, trying to force through and just get things done as quickly as possible, that's no way to be a professional. So remember, you may need to go through, and even though we're just doing a touch-up for this customer, you may need to go through and retouch up what you already touched up. It's just the way it is. It's how you um, keep people happy. In this case, I choose to apply as little moisture as possible between um, pad cycles. That way I can add more. You know, you get the carpet too wet, it's oversaturated. Now it's going to saturate your pad almost instantly. And remember, um, BLM or pad capping is a moisture wicking process. So it, the more moisture you put down per pass, the more moisture, the more quickly your pad will become clogged with moisture, the less soil recovery per pass. So you want to kind of um, parcel it out a little bit. So first pass, a little bit of moisture, second pass, a little bit more moisture. Um, remember, your, your goal is to have the carpet also dry as quickly. So if you add quickly as possible, so if you add too much all at once, it's not going to be as effective as doing a multi-pass operation. It's what I prefer to do. It's what I've been taught to do. It's what we did um, from the very beginning of MagnaDry. MagnaDry originally was just a bonnet cleaning system where we would put down our cleaning agent and use multiple pads to get the carpet come clean. And it worked absolutely phenomenally. You know, unfortunately, things got difficult with us being able to get chemical and pads and all that stuff so we went away from it for many years but now we're getting back more and more into it and we're finding that our customer satisfaction rate goes up higher and higher because people don't let wet want wet things so the longer it is wet even if you have two hour dry times well with BLM you can make it 15 minutes or 45 minutes around there way happier customer satisfaction rate so if you notice, now we're going to go through and pre-spray the next section. It doesn't take long to do this process. So we go through and we pre-spray. We're applying more pre-spray where it's heavier and less where it's not. Now we're not even using the tank in this case. The tank would put down too much moisture and we're not able to move quickly enough. If you have the spray kit on your Eco, you get a little bit more finite control. In the case of this carpet it's already beat to heck due to what previous cleaners have done to it um, unfortunately it's what happens in a lot of these communities they'll have someone show up knock on the door and say hey I can clean your carpet for X Y D Z, and they take advantage of the elderly um, and you know some of them are really forceful door-to-door -door style salesmen and even though they're not allowed to solicit they still do it and it's something you need to be aware of as a professional think of yourself if you're doing those practices think of how you can avoid those practices to make happier clients and long-term customers and you know right now I'm featuring one of the greatest things that the eco can do which is adjustable handle on the fly it's probably my favorite feature the floor machine that's difficult you have to shut it down adjust the handle to make those tight corners wheels down operation is nice and it is also got its downsides one of them is working in tight spaces in this case it's a pretty tight area a little bit more difficult to operate wheels down i actually think i would have less trouble navigating that area with a floor machine the traditional 175. so keep all this in mind when you're setting up your business you don't have to follow my model or anybody else's you can follow your own model you know your own um it's your business that you have the right to create and no one can stop you from doing it you know we live in a free market society you do what's best for you i'm just wanting to show you what i do in this case we come every three months to four months into this community and we let the customers know that we're going to be in the area and we have multiple homes that we do not always the same one every three or four months but you know we do several so 
it helps with these senior communities to be able to communicate with them openly. Um, you know, once again, community is super important to running a business. So ask yourself, what do you bring to your community? Are you offering a unique service or are you offering a personalized service? Are you offering one out dry times? Are you offering the highest heat and best um, sanitization? What are you offering? I found for myself, I offer something kind of unique to my community and the fact that I offer both BLM and hot water extraction and I can offer both at a fairly decent price for what I do. I'm also very flexible for what my clients need. I focus on what they need over what I need. Now, it may not work for a lot of business models, but it works for mine. And think of what you can do to set yourself out as being the guy that's willing to help people versus the guy that just has a menu. I mean, look at McDonald's, very successful business. Try to order, go ahead and try to order fried shrimp at McDonald's. You know, it just doesn't exist on the menu. I've never seen it on a menu at McDonald's. But yet, the mom and pop diner may have fried shrimp on their menu. It's one of the things to think about. You know, you can have a large menu or a small menu. In my case, my menu is actually kind of small, but it can be adapted to fit a lot of different situations. Like, I don't advertise 24-7 water removal. It creates too much havoc in my lifestyle. If I have a customer, though, that calls me up in the middle of the night, it's like, Tim, my basement's flooded. Well, they're already an established customer. I'm going to go and take care of them. Well, if the water removal uh, model works for you and your family, then go ahead and do it. You know, there's a lot of things that you can think of to make yourself more diverse and more um, advantageous to call than other things. It's kind of funny. One of my um, local friends owns a tire shop, and they, they offer 24-7 towing. And... It's hilarious. He'll get a phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning asking what four tires are for a 1998 Toyota Corolla. Just keep that in mind whenever you're offering 24-7 anything. You will get phone calls 24-7. So, you know, I really want to talk about now the color loss in that spot. Now, I do know that they were having these homes in this community disinfected by a local company, a maid service, and I wonder if they were using a bleach product, because I do re not remember them being there the last time I was at this particular home, but it does happen, and so carpet dyeing is a service that you may wish to offer, speaking about being diverse, but I've found it very difficult to sell carpet dyeing. Mostly because of the fact that customers don't value the carpet, and in this case, it's a really cheap poly, as much as you value the carpet. So keep that in mind. For everybody that's wanting to have absolute purity in all things cleaning, keep in mind that um, the customer, you've got to suit their needs and match their mindset for what their carpet is. In this case, she's not even wanting the carpet reset stretch. Why would she ever want those spots to be redone? I've talked to her about it. It's just not going to happen. So, and I've also found that dye kits will cover a multitude of sins, but they don't fix everything. And they take a lot of time. They're a lot more time consuming than a lot of carpet cleaners have time for. And you'll find yourself having to schedule a specific time frame to do dye of carpet. In this case, we have multiple homes to clean. How am I going to fit in an added item we already have a scheduled out for today? Just keep that all in mind when you're choosing to add or take away service. Even upholstery cleaning may not be a great fit for your particular 
business model. Ask all these questions when you're setting yourself up for the future, or even if you're currently in business. Ask the question, does upholstery cleaning really fit into our model? Is it stopping us from getting to the next job as quickly? You know, you can have a model that is really unique to what you want to do. So now we're going through and grooming. Enjoy the rest of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and hearing me ramble on. I really appreciate you. So you guys did it. You watched all the way to the end. Super appreciate it. You know, this is one of those jobs that was just a sweet little old lady in one of those retirement communities. You know, we have the contract with the entire community. It's pretty nice. Um, you know, if you're wanting to learn how to do that, join our Facebook group and, you know, get into the conversation. We talk to people about how to grow their businesses, you know. Join that Facebook group and subscribe to my channel. I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth as we go on through the years. Super appreciate everyone. Yeah, we're working on some products of our very own. Super excited. They're going to be released hopefully in the spring of 2020, but you don't know. They're, if they're not right, I'm not going to do it. That's the rule of thumb. So thank you guys for watching. Super appreciate all of you. Um, subscribe, You know, rate, comment. You know them. You know the whole nine yards. Over 70% of you haven't subscribed yet. What you waiting for? I'm not going to bite. Really appreciate it. Join our Facebook group. Subscribe to the channel. Take care. Oh, click on the links in the description. Buy the items there. You know, if you want the camera gear I use, it's in there. Um, but once again, really appreciate it. Have a great one. Take care.